Hey, welcome back to Zach of All Trades. I'm Zach, and I'm here with my pal, Grassy. Say hey, Grassy. Hello. I'm here because today, Grassy's going to be doing something that I am, and I think you will be interested in learning how to do. We're going to be installing a manual transfer switch so that should the power grid go down due to snowstorm or forest fire or zombie outbreak, he can still run his whole house simply by plugging in a generator. Let's get into it. All right, Grassy, so show me what this thing is, what it does, explain it a little bit, would you? Yeah, when I first started going down this road, I thought it was important to understand what was actually going on, and, and then I found out just how easy it really is. The first step to understanding this is is how how's your house work without anything, without a generator? Uh -huh. So you've got power coming in from the, from the pole, from the ground, whatever the case may be, uh -huh. and that wire goes into your panel. It's actually two wires. There's two there, there's two wires that go in there, and I'm actually going to draw those right now because that's significant for okay. a discussion later. Okay. But connecting to one of these wires then is a circuit breaker okay. that has a switch on it, and that's what you connect if you've got this circuit into your house, whether it's outlets, lights, whatever the case may be. That okay. wire comes into your box, connects into that circuit breaker, and that's where your, your on-off switch is for that. Okay. That's your normal, your normal house. That's, that's how your house is right now. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a generator on there. Okay. So here's that same line in your house, okay. and here's the panel, uh, which I'm going to ignore for a second because what we're going to do is we're gonna install this transfer switch. Okay. And so what I've got over here is a generator, okay. and I've got a wire coming in, and this happens to split for two Two just, power lines as well. Just like the city power does. Just like the city power. There's gonna be a circuit breaker on there, and then this wire is going to hook into that. Okay. Simple so, enough. so completely separate. Now the way this, the way the magic happens here, is you've got power coming in from the street. Mm -hmm. We've got our circuit breaker panel, like we talked about. We've got the two lines. We've got our circuit breaker here. We've got our power. Now we have the transfer switch here with the generator. Mm -hmm. Power coming in two lines. We only need to worry about two wires. There's only two wires coming out of this box. Okay. One of those wires, the red wire, we're going to actually connect to that circuit breaker. Okay. There's a black wire that comes out of this box and that's we're going to connect that to the line. Okay. So now what's happening, all the magic is happening in here. When we open this this up, you'll see the switches, but this is where the decision is made between whether we're going to run power off from this or power off from the generator. Okay. And they're completely separated so that when we're on generator power, this circuit breaker uh -huh. could pop if uh -huh. we overload the circuit. Uh -huh. Just like when we're on the house, if we overload that circuit, this circuit breaker could pop. Okay. And it's completely separated so that you're not feeding backwards into the grid or anything like that. Absolutely. It, it has to stay, stay separate. And you could get into big problems if, sure. they, if the streams crossed. Sure, sure. It never crossed the streams. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so now we understand the logic of it, so let's uh, take a tour through the box. Show me what's in there. All right, so when you open this up, it it comes with all of these wires that I've already fished are just kind of a, a mess in here, and I, I did some homework last night, so I, I ran all the wires out in kind of a logical manner. But this okay. is what the switch looks like here. You've got your, your transfer switches up top, uh -huh. and if you can see that, the top is generator, the bottom is line, okay. so when power is like normal, everything's going to be down to the okay. line position. We lose power, we hook up the generator, everything's going to obviously go up to the, the generator position. And then here are the, the uh, circuit breakers like we talked about. They give you four 20 amps and six 15 amps, uh -huh. and it just so happened that that matches with my plan and what I'm going to do. But they do include one of these little connectors that will connector bar. Yep. So you can make it a double pole circuit. So you can run on A and B here. Uh -huh. You can run uh, up to 30 amps. Okay. So these these wires here are uh, I think they're 10 gauge wires, so okay. they can they can handle 30 amps. Everything else is a 12 gauge wire. So even though these are 15 circuit breakers, uh -huh. they can handle 20 amps. You can pop them out and put okay. them back in. Okay. But. Uh, that's it. These wires just go out. A lot of wires, but really, when you think about it, it's doing the same thing 10 different times. Uh -huh. So we have one neutral, there's right. the ground, and then everything else 
is the red and black wire like we talked about. Right. The red is going to go to the circuit breaker, the black is going to connect with that line. Right. And and that's it. It is that simple. Well, let's go put this thing in, shall we? Sounds good. Hey, so before we do that, I'm looking at this and I'm wondering, there's a whole lot of wires here, dude, and there's nothing marked. Is that uh is that important at all? No, not important. We're just going to do hit and miss and see how long this <laughs> No, that's what's uh if you look at these more closely, They've got letters. Oh, they are on marked, them. and I just so, didn't look closely. So enough. this is B right okay. here. Okay. Um, what is this one? This is B. So this is the the B okay. circuit. So they labeled all of those for you, Perfect. which is which makes it That's super awesome. easy. And then when we go to the box, you'll see that I did my homework last night, okay. and I put little tags on on my uh, on my circuit breakers okay. A through J, uh -huh. what I wanted to do. Um, it's worth mentioning too while we're here is that this is a 10 circuit panel. Okay. There's lots of different versions of these things out there. There's okay. six circuit, there's eight circuit. and So this uh, one, so depending upon what your house looks like, I think we talked about this a little while earlier, you can't, you can't run every every circuit in your house, but you can get most of the big ticket items. I, I don't, I don't have that large of a house. This is going to run most of it. And when okay. we look at the panel, I'll show you the decisions that I made. Okay, great. All right, let's do it. All right. I'm paranoid about electricity, uh, and <laughs> so we, we will take the appropriate uh, precautions because I hate getting shocked. That's good because nobody's getting CPR today. All right, so what you're what you're looking at yeah, in here, right. things you don't want to mm -hmm. touch. This this bar right here is hot. Yeah, don't touch it. So um, this is the neutral bar okay. off to the side that's the ground bar so that white wire that we saw earlier uh -huh. we're just going to put that into this bar the ground okay. we're going to connect into there and then the red and the black wires are going to all connect in here okay so i'm going to kill power to the to the entire box which will kill power to the entire house so it's off so this bar should be cold now it is um, these wires here are still hot. Those okay. screws are probably still hot, so we're going to avoid anything down here. Okay. Um, this is still hot over here, but the area that we're going to work on up here is off. And then I will even turn these circuit breakers off. Sure. And so there. what's the so what's the difference between a double pull and a single pull? So it, it's kind of interesting. Interesting. You can see how these these bars are organized here. So. Remember on the drawing how I said that there are actually two hot wires coming into the panel? Uh -huh. That's what you can see right here, these, okay. these two hot wires. And so one wire powers this uh, this side, okay. one wire powers this side. Okay. But then you can see how these, these tabs stick out. And I don't know if you can get in here, you can see how the circuit breaker actually connects onto that tab. Right, it just kind of plugs into it. And so you can have both on okay. each side. So by having these two breakers side by side, you're actually taking power, half of it, 120 from oh, okay. one side, 120 okay. from the other side. So going to my, my panel in the front, or going to the air conditioning or the dryer, right. you actually just have two hot lines okay. going in there. Okay. That transfer switch can do double pull circuits. I think it can do uh, a couple of them, but I'm not going to power any of any of mine. Sure. Um, what I decided to power here was uh, that was really important to me was the kitchen uh -huh. uh, because that has our refrigerator, and then I have another circuit, one of these over here where it's the garage, and we have another refrigerator in the garage. So, okay. And I wanted to to balance the load, so I put those on opposite circuits okay remember how we talked about how the the generator has kind of a right. left side kind of and, and a right thing. side as well yeah when the zombies are coming you don't really care about your dryer that's so right much. what we're going to do is, is we're going to pop out one of these covers here okay and we're going to put the box the panel right here okay uh and then you should see just a, a mess, of, mess wires of wires in here and then we'll try to make sense of that perfect All right, so what we just did is knocked a hole in the bottom of the box for the incoming conduit. Yeah, I can probably do it. You want to guide it in there? First. Which is going to be... Fishing wires is... So we got this thing all installed and fished in. What comes next? What are we going to... I generally try to keep things as organized as we 
we can. So we'll just do one at a time. Uh -huh. Let's run the ground and the neutral first. We'll connect those. So what, okay. what, the way I do that, we'll run the we'll run the neutral over here. Again, since I'm pretty paranoid, I always check this stuff. Anytime I get any kind of metal tool in there. Yeah. And we had talked earlier how it's it's kind of interesting how I don't know if you can see the uh, the bar in the back there that connects the neutral and the ground together. <laughs> it's actually one one circuit if you want to call it that. But uh, we I don't know enough about electricity to know why that is exactly. But I do know that prior to this house uh, there were only a neutral and a uh, and a hot. So. Yeah. The ground didn't exist, so I think that's just that added safety measure to uh, try to prevent from being electrocuted. It's a good plan. All right, so we've got the that fresh white wire connected into the neutral bar, and then we've got that fresh green wire hooked into the ground bar, which again are connected to one another. So I've got the A wires here, okay. the A red a and black and there's our a circuit i'm going to disconnect i've got the power off here got the power off at the box that little guy is not powered there so i'm going to pull this this wire off the terminal okay all right and there it is okay in the literature it it says it lots and lots of times make sure that you're connecting the red wire to the circuit breaker must be important i think it's important now there's something we could do too here. We could we could pop this breaker out so you can see it. And it might be easier to oh, nice. actually put that wire in that way. And then where's the black wire gonna go? Now, I wanna make a double check. I got the A wire here. Uh -huh. Now this is what's gonna connect to what we just disconnected. Okay. Let's see if the size works. Just like that. Just like that. That's it. We do that nine more times. So that's it. It's it's wired. It's all in place. I think it's time we give this, yeah. this a try. It's go time. All right. So good. Zach pointed out that I forgot to take these little connectors off. This the panel comes with these, so you can these two will operate as one switch for if this was a double pulled situation. But there's just a little screw right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these all on the line. Like the power is on right okay. now. Hey, so while we're here, what about these uh, what about these meters in here? So I'm, I'm kind of interested to see those work too. So this is how we're going to tell uh, how much is being pulled from each load. Okay. So these are watts. Okay. So it's not amperage or anything, but uh, I think I've got a 7,500 watt generator. Uh -huh. Yeah, those numbers kind of kind of add up there. So we'll be able to see how much is being pulled on this side, how much is okay. being pulled on this side. So uh, what do we got for a generator going on here? All right, so this guy, the evolution of my generator hunt i first got a a honda 3000 watt one of the really quiet ones i uh -huh. wanted that for my rv for camping and i just figured uh we'll be able to um use it around the house if we needed to uh -huh. and i just thought maybe i'll i'll put an extension cord in the house uh -huh. and it was actually my neighbor that suggested hey wouldn't it be great if you could plug it into the panel in your house uh-huh I thought yeah, that would be a great idea, but I don't know how to do that. So I looked it up. That's how I found the transfer switch. And then okay. I quickly realized I probably need more wattage. I need a bigger generator. This is what's being sold at uh, Costco. Okay. I don't know the price there. I can't remember. Seven, eight hundred bucks, something like that. I got this on Craigslist for about six fifty. But what we what we are interested in here is this four prong. 120 240 volt. Okay. So that matches my my wire. I got a big old wire here that can ha handle that amperage. And we'll plug the other end into the panel. All right. Okay. All right, all these are in line. Just 
circuit breakers in anyway. All right, so we followed the instructions. We've we've hooked the cable up. Uh, I've got I've got everything in a configuration over there that would it would be as if power was on, except for the main breaker. Uh -huh. The main breaker is off, so we're simulating. Uh, so we're simulating power, power just went out. Yep. Tells us there we got 250 volts going out of there, so we've got power. All right, there's power on okay. that. Power on that, but not on the neutrals, so that's all good. That's like I would expect. All that's left is to switch these guys on. Something turned on. Now I don't know if we saw that little guy kind of activated. Yeah, it spiked a little bit. Now I'm turning this one on. I expect the same thing to happen here. Must not have been anything on that uh -huh. circuit. Nothing there. There was something there. A little bit. That was my garage with my refrigerator. Another refrigerator. Let's take a tour through the house and see what we got. Microwave is on. Yep. My light in my kitchen. <laughs> my light over here. It's pretty incredible to think that the entire house is disconnected from the grid right now. You are off grid in the middle of town. I know I've got power now to all of my uh -huh. lights in there. My bathroom. This is kind of where the guts of my my internet is, but I've got power to that. Let's do this. I'm not going to run air conditioning. Uh -huh. while this goes on. Uh -huh. But I might run heat. Let's see. I heard it. Heat's turning on and I didn't hear the gen uh, didn't the generator hear flinch. dip. I got hot air. I got lights. I've got my internet going. Refrigerator's on. Refrigerator's refrigerating. Refrigerator's on. All right, now let's do this. Let's turn the power back on to the box. Okay. Like, uh, like power like is restored. Power just came back on. And we'll switch back over and make sure there's no problems okay. with that wiring. Do this. Let's turn it on. Turn the power back on. Switch everything back over to the house. Okay. We're back on house on the power from the pole. Well, that's pretty sweet. So we just had your whole house running, most of your whole house, ten circuits running, um, in the middle of town, off grid, <laughs> running off of your generator. So let's talk brass tacks. What uh, what did this this whole unit here set you back? What did that cost you? So let me start by saying that I'm not part of the thrifty movement, so uh -huh. I, I will spend more on things than uh -huh. maybe I should. Uh -huh. So um, there are cheaper ways to do it than I have, so take that into account. This panel right here with the 10 circuits, uh -huh. I got it off from Home Depot's webpage, okay. and I think it's 450 something, okay. and delivered to my door. It ended up being $502, okay. something okay. like that. So for about 500 bucks, man, that's, yep. that's a lot of money, but I don't suppose it's a lot of money if all of the food in your refrigerator survives and your family is the only one on the block that survives the apocalypse, right? Hey, thanks for watching. I hope that this was informative and useful to you. Uh, bear in mind, we're just a couple of dudes just kind of doing this. This is not necessarily a how-to video. This is just showing you how we did it. Make sure to check with your local regulations if you're going to do this. We've done our due diligence and uh, I'd like you to do the same. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care.